very much. It's surprising how many people still are here. <laughs> so <laughs> Friday afternoon. Uh, yeah, agriculture is needed from everybody because we need to eat. So still, uh, it's an important vertical. Uh, farming uh, is around since millions of years, basically. And we started uh, in the late 80s with uh, weather stations, uh, which had already digital uh, sensors. Uh, we were uh, first ones did have uh, a printer and uh, a display, an LCD display. And uh, yeah, we are in the Internet of Things since uh, 2004. So somebody was asking me yesterday, uh, I think it was in the, in the main hall, how long our, your systems are lasting. And I was saying, we have systems there 20 years in the field. So that's something, you can have startups, they, they promise you everything, and there are startups here, of course, but you cannot bring, you cannot build old bridges. Um, we have been growing that company, or I've been growing the company with my employees uh, over the last 30 years in a decent-sized company, 125 people. We have development center in Austria. We have about 40 engineers which are working on new developments. Uh, we have affiliates uh, and uh, own subsidiaries in different places. Our biggest market, of course, is Europe. If it's a single market, Europe, but uh, the biggest markets for us are also US, Brazil, with a team of 11 people in Brazil. Because one thing is for sure, if you work with Internet of Things, they break. They break early or later. So you need to have service with this stuff. And this is very important that many of the companies often disregard because helping the farmer, and farmer is not a consumer, is a consumer, but it's not a consumer good. So if you look at uh, what happened in the last century, basically in agriculture, of course, you had the mechanization, you had the GMOs coming, but also the farmer now since 20, 25 years, they're using precision farm technology. And precision farm technology is uh, in the past, uh, uh, the, the big green tractors or the red tractors, the blue tractors, they, they generated a lot of nice maps. But they forgot the weather, because the weather is often the most important single factor which can destroy or, or can cure uh, things in the, in the field. So uh, now the farmer often has the problem to have too many decisions to make and too many promises from uh, outside companies are coming, so I can help you with uh, plant protection, I can help you with uh, irrigation management, I can help you with uh, uh, keeping the tractor in the right uh, uh, track. And of course, there is big companies like the green, the blue, and the red tractors, they are very powerful and they have the possibility to do this uh, and, and sell them something. But of, of course, uh, we as a sm relatively small player, maybe one of the bigger ones in this industry, need to work in an ecosystem because it, it, at the end of the day, the farmer doesn't want to have hundreds of apps on his uh, mobile phone to run his farm. So he wants to have one platform, one system, and yesterday we heard from Microsoft, uh, uh, Ranveer Chandra said, okay, there is a platform which is called FarmBeats, but of course FarmBeats is still in its infantile stages. We have interfaces to them, but of course there's other companies, there's ProAgrica, there is, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, every, every uh, country has its own platform. But at the end of the day, all this IoT needs to play together in a sensible and uh, real way. If you sit, see what a farmer has to do every day, Hundreds of decisions need to be taken in seconds. And uh, this might be, uh, can I go to this field to spray? Can I go to this field to plant? Can I do, send out my, my workers to, to, to harvest or, or do other things? And of course, the farmer is also an entrepreneur. He's working with banks. He's working with insurances. All these companies, all these stakeholders need to get information. He needs to financiation and all these things are very dependent on, on uh, decisions. And what we do in basic of our products is risk mitigation. So we help the farmer to do, to mitigate his risk. We cannot avoid, but because we cannot switch off the rain or we cannot make rain 
uh, when it's needed. So basically, this is a very important slide. It shows you how are the decision-making process of a typical farm. You need to see it, you need to have uh, information about when I can access the fields in order to not uh, destroy my, the assets, let's say the soil. You need to spray to protect against uh, pesti pests and, and, and diseases. He has a workforce to take care. Uh, he has to, to irrigate in many cases. We all know about Holland used, didn't, was not an irrigated country, but now uh, a lot needs to be done also here in Holland because they don't have uh, enough rain during the growing season. And then you have to have alerts. When uh, there is something going wrong, the farmers need to be alerted in order to mitigate and correct it in time. And everything should run almost in real time. And uh, I think uh, when we talk about LoRa, this is something which we are getting close to it. Because at the end of the day, the farmer wants to have this in real time and make smarter decisions. Sorry, it's the wrong side. Uh, yeah, communication. Communication is a big issue. When we started uh, in uh, the late, uh, in the early 90s with the beep, 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 beep modems, the dial-in modems, uh, some of them, for well, you are a little bit older, they know that, uh, the 2400 baud modems. Uh, we were already using them to download the data. So real-time data download is not the real thing. N nice new things. But of course now we talk about LoRa, Wi-Fi, LTE, uh, LoRaWAN, uh, narrowband added cut one. The farmer really doesn't care how the data comes in. The farmer wants the data on his mobile phone as fast as possible. If it comes in with, uh, with smoke signal, he wouldn't care. So, uh, and also satellite, of course, this is the reason we talk about we can do this in real time almost everywhere. So what are the technologies we have? We've started with weather stations, and still weather station is, is our, let's say, weather and soil moisture is still maybe 80% of our business. But we have weather forecast. We operate with a Swiss company who is uh, very, very, very good, best in class in weather forecast, so we can give you an hourly weather forecast for any place in the world. Uh, every hourly updated with the data corrected from our weather stations. So I can tell you we can for sure be better than almost all the weather bureaus or other offices in the world because we have the correction in the field. Then we have uh, insect monitors. We have cameras in the field which helps the farmer to see when the insect is flying. We have uh, cameras which observe uh, the growth, observe the, 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 the yield, and uh, we also monitor outdoor, but also indoor, in, in dairy farms. We monitor temperature, humidity, or in chicken farms, we monitor the CO2 content on the level of, of the chick. Then another important thing is nutrition monitoring. Nutrition is nitrate, uh, it's ammonia. People are, especially in Holland now, uh, the, gov the government is putting a lot of pressure on the farming to reduce, uh, the farmers to reduce uh, the application of fertilizer. Farmers are, are, are protesting everywhere right now because it's not true that they are pollute, polluting the, 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 but you need to make sure that you do the right thing in the right moment. Then tracking, there's lots of trackers out there. You can track animals, you can track toilets, but you also have to track your machines, where they're used, what they're doing, and, uh, and one other thing is very important, we can cross-comply things. Uh, say, okay, what was the weather when the spray took place? What was the weather before, during, and after the spray? All these things are artificial intelligence. I wouldn't call it artificial, it's, it's more common sense. If I, know, if I know that there was a rain coming and I sprayed, it's stupid. But sometimes people don't know and, uh, and thunderstorms happen, so if I know it ahead of time, or the guy was having a little bit too much beers, maybe you had this yesterday as well, uh, and, uh, and then they, they forgot to spray a, a row in the a, in a orchard or in a, in a field. So when I know it ahead of time, I can fix this and it doesn't cost me money. Satellite imaging. The ESA satellite, uh, Sentinel, 
makes a whole lot of change for farmers because then I can bring data, together data from the satellite, bring together data from uh, uh, the fields in real time and, and so forth. And last but not least, this should run all automatic. All automatic, fully uh, intelligent, running the irrigation system and uh, some other uh, automatic systems. So here it's just a repet repetition of things, weather, water management, irrigation management, workforce tracking, storage and tank monitoring. This, kind of, this I can do with LoRaWAN. Other things like, like transmission of, uh, of camera data from the field, this is something which I need to do with uh, LTE and uh, uh, higher broadband solutions. The use case I've brought here, one is our latest thing, this is called Lorraine, and uh, Lorraine is uh, it's not so nice like the, 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 the Laura Ruta, which the guy showed yesterday, but the problem is here we have some constraints how it should look like. And this is uh, a rain gauge, which is normally mounted about this high in the field. It has a rainfall, and it has a temperature and humidity monitoring in, on board. It has a small solar panel. It runs, uh, we made it, uh, it should last for seven years plus should not re need a lot of uh, maintenance, just a little bit of sunlight, uh, and it runs. Then we have, uh, a, let's say, a full weather station. This is just an example of wind speed and wind direction sensor on, on uh, fairly new technology called uh, ultrasonic sensors, low, low, low energy. We can run it also with LoRaWAN. And this is called LORAT, and uh, this can monitor temperature, humidity, soil moisture as well. The soil moisture sensors are not there. But of course, we're developing other new sensors which are, are coming up. Tracking, as I mentioned before, before uh, we have asset tracking of tractors, we have asset tracking of uh, uh, implement as well. We also put the stuff on the, on the machine, so we can cross-check when the machine was passing over, what was the weather and what was the, uh, the forecasted things. So at the end of the day, we need to design a business model because all things are nice, but at the end of the day, we need to make money. We need to make money. The farmer needs to make money. So we are open to various kinds of business model. We have a toolkit of products where we can offer this as an ABI. We, we collaborate with... Uh, Meteor Blue, which is our weather forecast company, but we are also open to work with IBM or with TDN. Uh, not the TDN, this is a forecast company. We can do the forecasting of intelligent maintenance based on the, the usage of the machine. And basically, we can bring this all on one platform. One platform might be uh, our field climate, but there's also other platforms like FarmBeats, which we heard before. So this is just a, a small, Snapshot of our partners we work with, of course, John Deere. We are partnering with John Deere. We have a global relationship with John Deere. So we get access to the John Deere network, which is about 3,000 dealers worldwide. Because what I said in the beginning, we can, uh, we, one thing we are 100% sure, this bloody thing breaks. And you need to have service when it breaks. And this not, should not cost you a leg and an arm and a leg. So that's where, where we think we need to work together with different operators, uh, different uh, uh, integrators as well. We work with insurance companies on parametric insurance uh, stuff, stuff. We're also now going into the new markets. We're going into markets like uh, um, smart cities. I have equipped already a few uh, cities in Switzerland with uh, with some systems, we, we come up soon with some solution. We also collaborate with uh, Bosch on the Nevonex project, which is very interesting as well. So we are here to collaborate because I think the, the mountain is too big that we can climb it alone. Yeah, and let's, I just ask uh, Dom now to come on the stage because also we said, okay, we are going to connect uh, everything everywhere and Tom is uh, from Hyber, and he can say what they do. Thank you. Let's see. Yes? Okay. Thank you very much, Gottfried, and um, good afternoon, everyone. If you remember back to the start of Gottfried's presentation, he had a map on this screen. 
that showed Pestle's impressive global presence, uh, right? And as Gottfried has been explaining, they have devices that need to work from Austria to Australia, right? No matter where it goes, it needs to work, and they need to have partners uh, to make that work everywhere. So let's imagine for a second that you're a, one of their customers in, uh, in the Philippines, and you own a palm oil, uh, palm oil uh, plantation. Um, and you want to, have, want to use one of their weather stations. Uh, well, that equipment needs to work there. It needs to be able to send its data. And that's very hard, as you know. This is a harsh environment. It's in, in the middle of nowhere. There's no cell coverage. There's no power to connect this up. So it's a very hard uh, problem to solve. And Gottfried has been working to solve that problem for years now uh, with this team. They're a very good team, and they have been able to solve it, uh, but only in very complex and very often also expensive ways. So when we met them in Austria a few months ago, we all got very excited because this is actually exactly why we founded Hyber about four years ago, to provide that missing link in IoT connectivity, to make sure that no matter where uh, you, need, you want to connect something, that that is scalable, that it's easy, and that it's affordable to do. We're a company from Amsterdam, we're about 50 people. And one of the things that we've done is uh, we've developed uh, a LoRaWAN uh, gateway that you can deploy anywhere out of the box, uh, is solar powered, uh, connects to a satellite, and um, it basically just provides your local LoRaWAN network very easily for 50 cents a month for uh, a device. So it makes it much easier, much more scalable. And if you go to the next slide, uh, um, Gottfried, you'll see that this can be used in many areas. Of course, you work in, in agriculture, where this is very relevant in countries like the Philippines, of course. Um, but there's a lot more going on in these remote places, like oil wells in the desert that need to be monitored for, uh, need to be monitored for leaks, or heavy equipment in mines in the jungle that needs to be tracked. Um, and I can also imagine that in, in your work, you've come across your fair share of connectivity issues. Um, so from my part, of course, I'd like to say, you know, if you work in remote areas or if you run into these issues, if you're looking for a robust, uh, easy to install uh, gateway that you know, creates this connectivity no matter where, we're, we're right outside about 10 meters to the left, we have our stand, and we're very happy to talk to you about this. And uh, we're very happy to be here on stage with Gottfried. Because about a few weeks ago, you received one of the first gateways uh, uh, from us. Uh, so we're very proud it of works, this. Uh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> we're very proud of the, the partnership that we have here uh, with Gottfried. So thank you very much. OK. <clears throat> yes, thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, are there any questions at this stage? Yes, I'd need to have a microphone from the table over there, please. Thanks. Thank you. If you have about 400 harvest harvesters in your oil palm plantation in the Philippines, how much would it cost? So, very good question. This depends on how often you want to know something about these harvesters. Um, but if I want to know their position every five seconds. Every five seconds? Um, this would be, uh, so what I just mentioned, mentioned with the 50 cents a month, that would be for one update per day. Uh, so if it's every five seconds, you'd be in uh, a number of euros per, uh, per month per device, basically. Mm -hmm. So we'll just bear the cost of, of course, the device, the transportation. Exactly. If you excuse my language of calling it transportation. Sure. Uh, make it simple. We need to connect your uh, Sime Darby yes. weather stations to my gateway. No price. Talk to you. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Time for one more question. I was just uh, curious, Gottfried, because uh, you already mentioned farmers are under great pressure, at least here in Holland, um, because of sustainability policies that are now changing uh, to the, well, between high brackets to the worst for them. Mm -hmm. What can Laura contribute tomorrow towards farmers? to solve more of the sustainability issue? I would say it's the simplicity, the cost-effectiveness of the devices. 
And this is, for example, we talk about a few hundred uh, euros for uh, a rain gauge, which, uh, okay, every farmer in Holland, they think they have about 10 rain gauges, manual ones, but the cost is to get this data and get, get this data digitized. And this does it automatically. He's, he's selling vegetables on the, in Rotterdam at the, at the market. He needs to know how much rain was on the farm. And he needs to have the farmer. The farmer has to tell, OK, uh, now you can go out and harvest, or you have to stop and do something else. Yeah. So these are the things is uh, traceability and risk mitigation. And then, of course, traceability leads into better uh, let's say application and 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 and, and uh, helps the farmer to, to use the right amount of pesticides, the right amount of water. Yeah. Uh, and are are they aware of the potential if it concerns uh, sustainability, or do you have to preach? In Holland, I don't need to. I don't. Of course, in Holland, it's a different story. But if you don't go with Sam Darby or Sam Darby, it also knows. Uh, but the cinemas, they 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 still are under let's say under the scrutiny, I would say, mm -hmm. that they, they, don't, they don't really know about uh, okay. what, what is the potential. Yeah, so still lots of work. Yeah, Holland is, 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 is far advanced. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, once again, thank you uh, very much, gentlemen, uh, for your uh, lively presentation. And an applause for the gentlemen, please. Yes.